Hey everybody, it's AJ here, and in today's video, we're gonna hook my Surface Book 3 through a whole bunch of benchmarking tests. My Surface Book is the top spec model you can get. It's the Surface Book 3 15 inch with the i7 processor, 32 gigs of RAM, the six gig NVIDIA Quadro graphics card, and a 512 SSD. The benchmarks we're gonna put it through are gonna test out the GPU, the CPU, and of course the SSD. Right now, the Surface Book 3 is running Windows 10, but I am going to create another video running the exact same benchmarks after upgrading this to Windows 11 to see if the operating system change brings with it any performance benefits. If you want to see that video, make sure you hit that subscribe button to get notified when it comes out. With that being said, let's jump into this. Okay, so we just finished running Crystal Disk Mark to check out the read and write speeds of the SSD. We got just over 2000 megs for read speed and just under just over 750 megs for write speed. So pretty good and I've never had an issue with the SSD on the book. What I will do to give you a bit of a comparison is I'll compare the scores that we got now and I'll put a chart up comparing these against the Surface Laptop 4s that we tested a few months ago.
So looking at all those benchmark results, I think the Surface Book here with the 10th gen i7 pulls some pretty respectable numbers. Of course, comparing it to the newer Surface Laptop 4 with the 11th gen processor, the Laptop 4 actually does outpace it in a lot of areas. One thing to note is that the Laptop 4 only has an i5 processor, whereas the Surface Book here has an i7. Um, so naturally you'd think the i7 is better, although this actually does show you the generational jump that you get going from 10th to 11th gen. So when it comes to the GPU, of course, that's where the Surface Book 3 with its dedicated 6 gig uh, graphics card just screams ahead. It scored over 60,000 points on the Geekbench uh, GPU test, where the Surface Laptop 4 with its integrated graphics scored just over 15,000. So the Surface Book was more than four times as powerful. When I've been using, and my main reason for using the Surface Book is for video editing, and that's where it really does shine. It has that dedicated GPU inside of it, and it's honestly been flawless with um, the work that I've put it through. One thing I would say though, is that the GPU is extremely powerful, whereas the processor inside of here is a 10th gen i7 that's only 15 watts. So it's a lower powered laptop processor. And I'd say there was a bit of a mismatch between the power from the GPU and the underperformance of the CPU, because a lot of the times when I'd be doing things like video editing and using the PC, I might be maxing out the CPU and getting it to close to 100% utilization, where the GPU is just chilling there at 30, 40, maybe 50%. So if you're using GPU intensive tasks, the Surface Book absolutely screams. Um, but CPU wise, you might even be looking at a new laptop with 11th gen processors. One thing I do want to call out though, is that because the GPU is in the base here and it technically does detach, um, we did actually have an error running the user benchmark test where it just didn't detect the GPU at all. So you'll see the results from that showed that the Surface Book had a terrible GPU. And I'm not sure why that is because it gave a even lower score for the Intel Iris graphics. Um, but that is one caveat that I would say that the results here, that is one thing that that's an outlier that doesn't show the true representation of how the book goes. So this was a test running the Surface Book benchmarks using Windows 10. I am actually going to upgrade this now to Windows 11 to see if the operating system improves or decreases the scores that we do get. If you are interested in seeing that video when it does drop, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that upload. If you guys like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.